Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to History with Ejaz. Thomas Sankara, arguably one of the greatest African leaders of all time, an upright revolutionary, and he was known as Africa's Che Guevara. He was born on the 21st of December 1949 and passed away on the 15th of October 1987. He was born in Upper Volta, now known as Burkina Faso. He has a very famous quote where he says, Thomas Sankara says, while revolutionaries as individuals can be murdered, you cannot kill ideas. Therefore, we always say that you can kill a great leader, but you cannot kill his vision, ideas and wisdom. Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X are still alive and are with us through their wisdom and teachings. Sankara's Roman Catholic parents wanted him to become a priest, but he opted for a military career. In 1970, at the age of 20, Sankara was sent for officer training in Madagascar. This is the first time he actually witnessed a revolution. There was a popular uprising of students and workers that succeeded in toppling Madagascar's regime. So these protesters inspired Sankara to study and read works by socialist leaders like Karl Marx and seek wisdom from military strategy. So as soon as he returned from Madagascar, he started becoming very popular in Upper Volta. He became popular because of his charm, charisma and oratorical power was a ferocious orator and in 1974 he earned much public attention for his heroic performance in the border war with Mali. By the early 1980s Burkina Faso was rocked by a series of labor union strikes and military coups and Sankara was appointed as prime minister in 1983. However he was dismissed and was placed under house arrest. He was kept under house arrest causing a popular uprising. On August 4, 1983, Blaise Compiore orchestrated the August Revolution or a coup d'etat against the Council for the People's Safety. So they rescued Thomas Sankara and he was freed from the house arrest and they overthrew the president Odrago. And then they formed the National Council of the Revolution with Sankara as its president. Now the second part of my segment is very interesting. What did he do as a leader? What's so special about Thomas Sankara? You'll be astounded by these facts. So now he was in charge and he launched his ambitious program for social and economic change. The first agenda was to change the name Upper Volta because Upper Volta was a name given by the French colonizers he changed the name and he changed it to Burkina Faso, the land of upright men. Sankara had ideas that completely changed the landscape of Burkina Faso. He aimed at annihilating corruption, empowering women, raising awareness on a number of subjects and increased access to healthcare. So Sankara successfully implemented programs that greatly reduced infant mortality. He vaccinated 2.5 million children against meningitis, yellow fever and measles in a matter of weeks. Further than that, he initiated a nationwide literacy campaign. In 1983, the literacy rate of Burkina Faso was 13%. In 1987, the literacy rate rose by 60%, becoming 73%. Imagine, 13% to 73%. It was a massive, massive rise in education. On the environmental front, in terms of taking care of the ecology, in the first year of his presidency, 10 million trees were planted in an effort to combat desertification. You know, today we see a number of activists fighting for the environment, raising awareness in regards to our ecology. 
activists such as Greta Thunberg and a number of world leaders as well have taken the issue of climate change into consideration such as the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, Emmanuel Macron, etc. But this man, Thomas Sankara, in the 80s, 1980s, he says we must look after our ecology, we must preserve our environment. Furthermore, he was ahead of his time. How? Empowering women. He appointed females to high governmental positions, encouraged them to work, recruited them into the military. Furthermore, there were a number of discriminatory laws against women, such as female genital mutilation, removed it. He also outlawed forced marriages. Sankara was a fervent believer that Burkina Faso could learn to sustain itself devoid of foreign aid. He completely declined any sort of foreign assistance, including packages from the International Monetary Fund. So he famously said, the one who feeds you usually imposes his will on you. It's a fact. A country that provides aid to another, another nation, that country will always say, now you must do this for me. Quid pro quo. Sankara also once proclaimed, we cannot repay the debt. Now, the national debt. We cannot repay the debt because we are not responsible for this debt. On the contrary, others owe us something that no money can pay for. It's not us who have to pay anything back. We don't have to repay anything. But there's something that we are owed. However, we will never be recompensed for that. That is to say, the debt of blood. In terms of discipline, he forced civil servants to pay one month's salary to public projects. He reduced their, fee, uh, he reduced their salary. He reduced his own salary and forbade the purchase of first-class airline tickets. Does this remind you of anyone? Our current president, Dr. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli, also showcases same sort of discipline. So he was once asked, why don't you want your portraits hung in public places? He had a policy whereby he stated that I do not want my portraits in public places. So he was asked, what was the reason behind this particular policy he said there are seven million Thomas Sankaras that means we are all equal yes I am your leader however I am here to serve you not only that Sankara also holds the record of perhaps one of the few leaders who actually composed the national anthem and he is the one who came up with the tune Therefore, he wrote the national anthem and also gave it its tune. I do not know if there are any other world leaders who may have done this. Perhaps you can let me know in the comments below. On October 15, 1987, Thomas Sankara was killed with 12 other government officials in a coup d'etat instigated by Blaise Compiore. Remember, the person who assisted Thomas Sankara, his political ally, his friend, his companion, his acquaintance, now his biggest enemy and the man who murdered Thomas Sankara. He was 37 at the time of his death. Sometimes your closest friends turn out to be your greatest enemies. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the history of Thomas Sankara. In brief, he says revolutionaries can be killed. Great leaders can be killed, but their ideas, their vision, their teachings will never be killed. Ladies and gentlemen, History with Ijaz, thank you very much for joining. See you next time.